What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna answer some questions. Today we're gonna talk about a really, really budget option as far as the AR goes. Today we're gonna be going over a $380 AR, and we're gonna be talking about the Bear Creek Arsenal BCA 15. Now, this one I have here was sent to me by Bear Creek, but it will not change how the review goes, and it will not change uh, my opinions, and we'll show you everything that happens in the videos. Now, this gun itself is an AR-15, but it is very, very cheap, and the last time we had a cheap AR on the channel, the ATI, it did not go very well. All right, so we're gonna shoot a little bit of the cheapest AR-15 on the market today, the ATI Omni. We're not gonna shoot that much. <laughs> now that gun already looked like subpar quality compared to this one. That one had a polymer upper and lower, which is sort of terrifying. Uh, whereas this one is made of uh, forged aluminum. So as you can see here, this one looks a lot better. And we have aluminum upper and lower, and then we have an aluminum M-lock rail that comes with it as well, which is full length, 16 inch barrel on this guy, and then even a mid-length gas system, which is pretty cool. We have standard super cheap AR furniture from the 1980s, which I obviously is to keep the cost down. And we have a standard AR charging handle, safety, single-sided safety, and mil-spec trigger on it. Obviously because as cheap as possible and on the parts you can that don't matter that much. And then uh, go a little more expensive on stuff like maybe the receiver. And on this one, we have an M4 profile barrel. The finish is parkerized. And the bolt material on this is E9310 whatever that means. So hopefully today we're gonna shoot the crap out of this and we'll give you the answer on whether or not a $300 AR is good enough for self-defense, home defense, that kind of thing. Uh, kitted out a little bit. I wanted to go cheap on the accessories, but not too cheap. Uh, I went with the Holosun HS510C. Yes, I read that off the optic because I can't remember them all, but it's kind of like a little budget EOTech that's not quite as durable, but it does have a shocking field of view. And I do use this occasionally in competitions, a very fast optic for being very, very low cost. And then we have the Streamlight ProTac on there, which is like a hundred bucks with a tape switch. And yes, I zip tied it to it. I didn't use a little connector things because I wanted to get it on there fast and uh, it is what it is. Now, uh, the V G6 Gamma's on there as well. I just put that on there for fun, so be aware of that. So today we're gonna be shooting this uh, $300-ish AR-15, and we will have to see about the reliability, the accuracy, and then obviously the shootability up close as well. We're gonna be testing it with PMAGs, and we're gonna be shooting PMC 55 grain ammo. Now, before we get into that, I do want to mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you guys we have guns and ammo and cool stuff on the channel. You guys are going to be supplying the ammo for the video, and I really appreciate that. Uh, I also want to mention a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help, so please go down there and donate to those kids. Now, that being said, let's go zero this guy. We'll shoot some groups maybe. We'll shoot it up close, and we'll see how it goes. Well, that's four in a row. That's more than the ATI did. Just kind of shooting quick groups to get it zeroed. I know this is probably not going to be the world's most accurate rifle, and in all fairness, we're shooting a non-magnified optic, and I'm not good enough to put half a million groups down with a red dot anyway, so it is what it is. Trigger's heavy, but not too bad. The nice thing about a heavy mil-spec trigger is it kind of forces your finger out and you can shoot faster, so that's kind of fun. All right, let's go check those terrible groups out. 300 yard or $300 AR, red dot sight, 
I had it up too high for the most part, so should be pretty bad. This is my first group here. And as you can see, that's about an inch group right there. And inch group at 50 yards is like two MOA. That's pretty good for a $300 AR. This is my second group. This was the worst. That's actually two rounds there. And then this one's just one. So that's a two inch group right there. But I wasn't really trying super hard there. I was trying hard on these two though. And uh, this is my third group here, uh, low, and or low and right. And as you can see there, that's using the old inch scale. That's about an inch group there, which is pretty good. And then that was three, and then this is the following two. I remember putting these three and being super jacked. I, they all felt good, and then I kind of fucked two up, so it makes sense that I have three right here and two out. So for the most part, I would say it's a you know two to three MOA gun, which is pretty crazy for stock ammo and you know really really cheap gun. Load her back up. Now I shot a like $4,000 AR a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of days ago, sorry. And uh, that performed really well, but this is hanging in there. He didn't know the ride he was about to go on. No shit. How's it? Imagine a muzzle blast when you're that small. Right. Nice. Not bad. Damn. Running good. Yeah, it is. Go. Well, hunted through it so far. It's running super well. Oh, now we're gonna take this guy, and we've shot a little over 100, like 120 of PMC through this, and it worked great. So that shows me that it's pretty reliable so far, uh, especially that it didn't need a break in or anything like that. It's pretty nice. Uh, now we're gonna try to shoot some frangible through it, which can be a little lower powered. It's polymer framed ammo, uh, polymer tipped ammo, so I can shoot steel up close and it looks kind of cool on camera. So if we do have some malfunctions, just know that that's not the fault of the rifle. So be aware of that. This stuff is finicky in all my guns, but it looks real cool. It's fast, that's for sure. And it hip shoots well too. If you buy one of these, you can hip shoot right away. Now we're gonna do a little home defense drill. Let's say these two perps come into your house. Uh, we'll see if we can handle them. Get those perps. They win. Beep. Pocket reload since I didn't have enough ammo. Yeah, I don't know, I've been hip shooting a lot lately. It's fun, that's yeah, why. It is fun. Do the John Wick. 
<laughs> Where you aim without aiming? Right. All right, let's try that again. Okay. It's fast. Yeah. I like this thing so far. That's cool. All right, so should we see how we dueling tree in case you get attacked by an AR-500 target? Yes. Do it. Forgot my damn offset. Oh, AR-15s and their damn offsets. Damn it. Well, that's a buck 50. I like it. All right, so that was a lot more fun than I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna be honest with you, the last couple of cheap ARs we've had have not gone super well. And the fact that this one not only performed well, but in my opinion, for its price point, pretty exceptional. I mean, if you compare this to the ATI, or if you compare this to uh, any number of cheap ARs, it can hold its own, apparently. Woo, it's hot. I had gloves on while I was doing the review. That's funny. <laughs> uh, the rails are getting hot because it's 90 degrees out here. That's why I'm sweating and I look like a, a sweaty pig right now. But uh, the gun, we shot a hundred and something of PMC, either five or six boxes, I can't remember. And uh, then we shot a box of uh, polyfrange ammo and it all ran perfectly, which I did not expect. I expected there to be a break-in period and there was not. So I think we can kind of hopefully assume this is gonna be a positive review, although we will do one, so don't go jumping to it just yet. I think we should still do a thousand rounds through this just to make sure, and I wasn't planning on doing that, but now I think I'm going to because it did so well, and a lot of times I just don't wanna struggle, so if a gun comes out of the gate really shitty, <sighs> Oftentimes, I'm not as motivated to actually get done the review. So, what went well and what didn't go so well? Uh, the gun was reliable, super accurate. I was a lot more accurate than I anticipated, but then again, ARs are traditionally, if not the most accurate, one of the most accurate rifle platforms and semi auto that you can get. And it really showed itself here today. The mid leg gas system helped out a lot, decreasing the, the uh, recoil. A lot of these cheaper guns come with carbine length gas systems, the mid length. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more and uh, allows a little bit uh, softer push because you get a little bit less gas to the parts. You get a little longer uh, durability on the parts as well, especially for cheaper made parts, which I'm sure these are. I'm sure these are not uh, the same quality as BCM or Daniel Defense, but if you don't want to shoot every day, you don't want to shoot every weekend, and you just want something to protect your home and maybe you shoot a thousand rounds to your lifetime, like honestly most people, you know, most people that I've met in my lifetime or in my small town, they pop, you know, 10, 20 rounds out a month, something like that, and they call it a day. And uh, you can still use this to protect your farm, protect your house, uh, protect your apartment with the right ammunition choices and the right uh, tactics as well. A lot of people talk about over penetration with a rifle. The reality is you get to pick where it happens. You know where your doors are, you know where your windows are, you know where people might get in, and you live there. So you get to kind of dictate a little bit more what happens in a home defense scenario than maybe a concealed carry situation, which can happen anytime out in the wild. So uh, I think, that's the way I think anyway. It's my personal opinion. Now, uh, the light works great. Obviously, if you're gonna go for a budget light, I would recommend Streamlight. Streamlight's gotten so cheap lately, I can find those for like a thousand or a hundred bucks somewhere in there and uh, they work great. Now, one thing I don't like about the gun is obviously gonna be the furniture because I'm a bit of a snob, and the uh, M-Lock rail worked awesome. Way better than I expected, and it was actually pretty comfy as well. They eliminated some of the pick rail here for the weight of like the Springfield uh, St. Victor, although this one actually works, and the St. Victor's double the price. Uh, back here, though, I don't like this. I'm not digging this. I don't really like the stock. A lot of people like that. I don't. It's kind of a little flimsy, and uh, it's harder on your shoulder because there's no uh, butt pad or anything, so when you're shooting off-center positions, maybe like prone where you just have the, the point of the stock in your shoulder, uh, if you're just, you know, mag proning, or if you're using the VTAC barricade and sometimes these sharp edges, I know it's only 5.56, but you know, if you're shooting 77 grain or something, that'd be uncomfortable. It wasn't too bad today because we're just shooting 55 and no big deal. Uh, but what I really don't like is pistol grip, and I don't like that it's angled back, uh, simply because this is the super old school, and I've been using a lot of the uh, K2s, uh, the more forward uh, grips like the BCMs, and uh, that was pretty uncomfortable just because I'm not used to it. But you know, 20, 30 rounds in, it worked fine. Overall, would this work so far? Yeah, absolutely. As long as it keeps up this reliability during the review, I, I'm actually probably pretty impressed with it. That being said, it's hard to say. And the reason for that is, is because when you buy cheap stuff, 
it's often made cheaply. Now, some are made more cheap than others. You can get into a Palmetto or a Smith & Wesson or a Delton, and those are budget ARs that do work very well, but they're all cutting corners here and there on manufacturing quality, quality control, and stuff like that. And, you know, what I've learned from budget handguns is that sometimes you can get a really great budget handgun, then sometimes you can't. So just because I got a really good one doesn't guarantee that you will. But I can't say enough about how this one in particular performed at least in the first 150 rounds. I'm really impressed. We're going to continue to shoot it. We're going to give you a full review. Uh, if you want to see it compared to other rifles, just let me know in the comment section below. If you don't want to see a review or you do want to see a review, let me know in the comment section below. I often do reviews based on what the reception of the first shots video is. So if you want to see it, let me know. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.